How's it going guys and welcome back to coaching and this is going to be the fifth episode here with Mashu FPS. So this one's a little bit different because this guy has, I guess, has made plat before but he just can't stay consistent and he actually is coming from a multitude, multitude of games including CSGO where he has 4,000 hours. So just by that you can tell that this guy is going to have some good mechanical skills. I'm pretty excited about this one. I did skim through them. I always skim through the videos to see if I want to do them and this guy definitely has the aim so I'm gonna try to be really really nitpicky here because I know he doesn't need the basic stuff and I know that going more in detail will actually be more beneficial to help Mashu get in plat and stay in plat. Now at the time of this, he was a gold three and now he's a gold two. So he must have hit plat just barely. He's only at 3205. That was his highest MMR, which is just five over plat. So truly he's kind of stuck in the gold category. So without further ado, let's hop into the game. So guys, we got Oregon today and he is gonna be playing Jaeger for the first round. So right off the rip, we're gonna probably see his mechanical skills, hopefully. I skipped to the middle of the video and I just saw that his aim was pretty good. So I kind of wanted to change it up because I've been kind of coaching more of a beginner type players, I would say. That last console video was like silver console. So it's just like a way different game up here whenever you have a player that has so much experience with competitive gaming like this guy does with CSGO. If you don't know that CSGO has some of the most competitive games ever and I want to get right into it. So I'm going to be as hard as possible on this one because I know that that's the only way that's going to help get them out of this rut. So right here, I don't know if you're cued with any of these guys, but still you kind of want to be the in-game leader here and try to tell them where they should put rotation holes. Now, if you don't have attic control, which is this room over here, you are pretty much toast. So you need to have a rotation hole right about here. This is the best place to have a rotation hole to connect you from kids to attic. Now, if you don't have a rotation hole there, you got to do something about it. Hopefully at least this bandit here is going to reinforce that wall back on the far and actually hold it if not then if you get out of control they can just run right through your team now hopefully that does not happen but out of control if you can obtain that on an attacking side on this objective they're done that's kind of the best way to attack this site you are probably the first jaeger i've seen out of all of these since i think the jaeger has been played in almost every single one of these games Get all your ADSs down and your barbed wire down before the prep phase. You didn't get your reinforcements, but yeah, you know, that's just, that's a good record there. You're doing better than everyone already. <laughs> so, at this point, you should be settling down, figuring out where you're going to go this round. So, if you're going to be a lurker, then be a lurker. If you're going to sit in sight, be um, find a spot, find an anchor point. Place I like to sit here is on this bed if i'm going to do that you have an ads already on this wall so um sitting on that bed would be a good choice right now because there is just access to see um from master bedroom all the way there and that window it looks like that's what you're gonna hold right now oh i see i see the window now the window is not something i like challenging ever because the window does get a little bit dangerous especially when you're peeking because there's really only one way you can peek and that is the way um leaning across the bed Okay. But it looks like they are pushing from the master side or the attic side. That's where all the sound is coming from so Anyone's far. An armory? An armory glass, glass. Yep, glass an armory. Your teammate called out. The glass. Okay. See, now there's a person at your window. window. So you probably shouldn't peek this. This is kind of a disciplined thing. It looks like you are going in for the peek, though. So we'll see what happens. But there's only one place you can peek from. And that's this is the place that everyone watches right where you're about to be peeking where your gun barrel is right here and not your gun barrel but your reticle the top of your reticle no. so yeah so that's the only place you could peek this right here is the only place you could peek so usually someone will hold the tight angle here and boom you're done or you just had a lucky fight there but you're kind of at the disadvantage here and um, yeah so your oh, aim like yeah so your aim was good kind of it's just so. The fire rate's only so good, and you're challenging someone at a very, very awkward angle, and that's why you ended up shooting your ADS right there. Uh, Just because the fire rate. Uh, your your crosshair was right on his forehead, but as requested, though, we're going to watch the other players, stuff, yeah. see how that goes. A lot of people want to see the entire game and want me to kind of coach through yeah, everyone's mistakes because at the end of the day, the people that aren't actually 
the ones being coached it doesn't matter who's being coached for them so if i'm coaching my shoe or not you um you guys will still in. get the same effect so we're gonna go over everything looks like we'll just watch whoever he's watching so it's gonna be echo for now it looks like a 1v2 he should be able to win this if he uses his echo drone and he has it down to a 1v1 got the drone no way he loses this if he plays this right um, he ran into the, I don't think he was. Hmm. No, no, he's that, was, that was an interesting call out by your team. Nice, good job. And he clutched it up. All right, Thanks. good round by him. Good Curious on what you guys bring for the basement. That's where you guys are going next. Laundry supply. You guys brought a Val Bandit. What else was there? Well, my I like well my on this. I'll tell you that. And you the need bomb. the Bandit. A vigil is okay. Oryx is not so good. So those are the only two I would probably switch here. I think a mirror is really important on these downstairs oh, no, sites. Now I don't think. What are they talking about? Yana. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. But a mirror on this site, right about here, is always good. You have this wall reinforced, or this wall reinforced, and then you have a mirror here. Now I like the mirror on this side but uh, it really does not matter. But a mirror is definitely good, and then you can put the other one freezer, wherever you want to put it, or on the back side, um, facing towards the back stairs, maybe. So either of those would work probably better than an orcs. I know that's not you, but a orcs is definitely more useful than, or a mirror is definitely more useful than an orcs. But we'll see how he does with orcs. That kind of determines that, I guess. So he's hard roaming here all the way upstairs uh, and it's already a 4v4 two quick frags you guys know where diffuser is down at and big tower you could easily rotate through attic we'll see what you do here hopefully you can get some easy flank kills here I want to see you in a real gunfight I know I saw just a little snippet you're playing your sound pretty good there now Whenever you're sprinting, obviously, it's very easy to hear you, but sprinting here is okay. Once you blow this up, you kind of timed it with the shots, sort of. They're getting shot out and everything. And then you're sprinting through while the explosion's going. Now, right about here is where you're going to want to start crouching, right about here, because you don't know where someone is. You just know someone's at the bottom of Big Tower, which is this guy right here. So right around this corner is where you're going to see everyone. So once you go down, right here, you should be crouching. Okay, you crash a little bit late for my taste, but you should be able to get them anyways. IQ dead. Ash dead. Yeah, okay. See, see this guy's shot? This is what I'm talking about by there's no reason for this guy to be in gold. When you're hitting double, when you're hitting double headshots like that, just right off the rip, it's just placement and it's just inconsistency. That's all it is with this well, guy. Nice with an aim like that, stairs. like honestly, he has a better aim than me with 4,000 hours of CSGO. So there should be no reason for him to be in gold. He has no business being in gold. We'll see how he plays situations like this because these are the situations that kind of determine a good player from a great player in Siege. You can have the best aim in the world, but you can't play, um, you can't clutch up a situation or play a situation correctly. And it's all useless. So. Downstairs, right? Minute 50 and it's a 1v1 already. Yeah. Quick round. Yep, nice. see another headshot. That's what I'm talking about. You could just do what you did last round consistently. I see no problem with you getting out of flat or out of gold. I mean, mechanically speaking, I think your shots are really good. Now leaning, I don't know how your quick lean is. I haven't seen that yet. I don't think think but we're gonna see hopefully if you can quick lean that is probably your next mechanical step that you want to take you definitely want to learn the quick peek with the aim that you have uh don't worry about that don't even touch your dpi don't touch your sensitivity you got that down obviously from all your hours on other games just what happens over time now it's just game sense at that point in theory someone should play above if they get that hatch you guys are pretty much toast and this whole floor is destructible so if a buck gets up here and a habana gets up here and this is open and the whole floor is open 
They have full reign into B site. That's always unfortunate, but this is the worst site. This and the other side are both the worst sites on the entire map. So it is really hard, really hard to play these. It's also 30 seconds to the round and the, the Rook is just dropping his armor. Aye, aye, aye. Your Rook, you have one, you have one job. To drop your armor right when the round starts. Put your reinforcements down. That's all. Seems like you're doing nothing here. You are a bandit. You already put all your electricity down. So, why don't you go for a roaming route or at least do something other than the spin around knifearoo? Because you could be doing something productive here. Let's hop on the cams. Do something productive. Ranked in this game is very, very fraggy. You gotta know that. So you just have to know that if you don't frag out or if someone on your team doesn't frag out and have those clutches, like the ones last round, then you're gonna be in trouble for sure. Bandit's recoil is interesting. In it's a lot of vertical. See what you can do here. But hopefully you don't over peak this because these rounds are going by stupidly fast. Obviously the attackers kind of choose the pace. You're at a minute 53 before. So enemies have fallen or people have fallen quite a lot i think it's because this is a gold game and everyone's just peeking everything now a thing instead of keep re-peeking this and re-peeking this is definitely learning the quick peek it looks like you don't know how to quick peek in this situation that is a uh don't run across like that you're in a good position here right here you don't need to go run out here and flank around the entire map uh, that's just a little excessive at this point. You're in sight. You have to cross the door that they're coming from just to open the barricade over here. A little risky. A lot of risky. And there's four people, so there's probably someone in. Probably someone watching the flank is what my guess would be. But we will see if the flank works out. It's just still, it's a 3v4. So if they come in sight and get some kills, yeah, now oh, 2v4. You so you're not in the best position here. Yep, at least you know that. You know the you know the game. That's good. Diffuser's down, no comms. You have a drone watching you over there. Okay. Yeah. So bomb was down. Where was your teammate here? So your teammate's still here. There's a drone right here. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the main thing. You have your teammate here, drone here, and then the bomb was obviously planted in a site. Now, a good assumption is probably a few of them are in the site. They either planted on the left side or behind this crate, or you know, that would be probably the two most common spots. So there's, there's either gonna be someone left or right. Now, Instead of just picking away, the better thing to do is always quick lean, as in, you look this way real quick, and then lean back, and then you look this way real quick, then lean back. So that is the way uh, I would definitely pursue that, instead of just focusing one side and completely committing to it. Now you guys that's lost a round, yeah. So two rounds on defense, that's not bad, 2-1. Now you guys got the attacker side, which is... Uh, you should be able to get two rounds, hopefully. See if you guys can win sure, this without rounds. overtime. And we'll see what you do with your drone here. Hopefully it's well, a saver. Idea, so I'll try not to die. We'll see if you can save good. this drone. Hopefully you don't want your drone to die either. That would be very, make me very happy. I hate when people throw their drones in to sight like that. That's just, ah. Uh, this drone? I know a lot of other games don't have this thing, but you have a camera, you have wall hacks, it's in the pocket of your hand. Just keep that thing alive. By throwing this away, see even putting it here and keeping it right here is a better idea than going chasing around, going on a goose hunt. Because if it's sitting right here, if it gets destroyed, oh well. But if it doesn't, then at least you have a view into sight. I mean, you have a little portion of it. Now, if your team puts one, I don't know, in the trophy room over there, then you guys have a big portion of the map cut off just by your drones. Instead, uh, I think kind of just got a little antsy here, missed that jump, and then you were screwed. Those things are important in this game, definitely. They were hunting my drone. Well, I mean, you said they were hunting your drone, but, I mean, you jumped in front of it. <laughs> Your IQ, do what you do, 
Hopefully you use that gadget up. A lot of common spawn peaks are right here. People will sit here waiting for the repel. Also, um, a lot of runouts out of this whole side of the map. Now, I don't know if they have a Val Yeah, they do have a Valk. So definitely watch out for the runouts here. Valkyries on this map can be very, very dangerous. So you're playing the window that you died from. There looks to be two ADSs. Oh, shit, bottom of the so your job as an IQ whenever there's a Valk, so you're playing the same exact angle that killed you. See how powerful this angle is? There's only one way that he could peek, and that's the way you're looking at. So defensively, you definitely already knew this, but you probably shouldn't have peeked that. If anything, hug this wall and then peek this way, and then it will be a little bit more confusing. But there's only one way you can go this way. As IQ though, if there's a Valk, that is your job. That should be your only job. I want to point this out for other people as well. This rotation hole is a no-no. Uh, it used to be the rotation hole, but now look at the rotation hole. What are you going to rotate through into people's lines of sight? People are always at this window. So this rotation hole is absolutely ridiculous because if someone actually peeks the rotation hole, you have one scope on you and you potentially have two scopes on you at all times. So this rotation hole is not the best a rotation hole and this wall is not really the best either. The attic rotation hole is the only really true rotation hole you actually need in this map or on this map. Sight, I guess, would be more specific. There's some someone spawn peeking in attic. Here. That's a re-peak. Um, you have a holographic sight here. So when you re-peak this, who knows who this is? I didn't really hear the gun that well. It might have been an MP5. I don't know. But you always put in, whenever you do stuff like this, you put your, your whole team in jeopardy if you were to go down by this guy. Now, you don't have a good angle on him. He's still watching you from that window. So just the fact that you didn't die from this is probably... You should be pretty grateful there and re-peaking it again. So re-peaking, it's just a gold thing. You just re-peak, 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 re-peak. But that's just not the way to play it. Just keep, just reposition yourself if you want to re-challenge that same guy. The better way to do that is just go repel onto the roof and take him from that angle or something. You know he's there now, so I definitely got an advantage there. Looks like your team fragged out though completely. The Sophia at least did frag out. But he's still attic. Now, why why do you have to push him here? So here's the thing I always see. I always see if I'm playing in gold matches. It is a 3v1. Okay, we got the round. We got the round. Everyone goes to push the guy. Everyone goes to push the guy. So you go in. Boom. You're dead. Okay, your next teammate goes in. Boom. He's dead. Now your other teammate's sitting planting on the floor. Does that look like... Does that look like a guy planting? Hopefully so. Now it's a 1v1 though. So just turn that 3v1 into a 1v1 real quick. The, that's the big difference between higher level players, gold level players, and of course down. Even plat players do this sometimes. They just get greedy. Just chill out. Just wait. If he has to push you, he has to push you guys. So there's no reason to do that. Traded. You traded. Well, God bless that. But that could be a very, very dangerous situations if you do that too many times. See if we can make this the last round. We're also going to see if you drone a little bit. You're a little more cautious with your drone. Those are my two main takeaways. Um, I guess a few main takeaways, but you're droning. That's a big takeaway. Your droning is a little aggressive. You don't. Okay, they're downstairs. Now go back up. You don't need to go get the points. You don't need to go scan it. Okay, right here. You spotted it. Go back up. You keep going in. You keep going in harder. Yeah. So I, I just think you don't value that first drone. So having two drones over one, just imagine that in the whole game. You have two drones instead of one all the time. Your team is keeping their drones here, but you already knew their garage or basement. So at that point, you don't really know who need to know who everyone is. It's nice to know, but uh, you're kind of full sending your drone in. He's just going in. <laughs> Jan is just going in. Nice just refragging him or, um, if he does die. You guys are really running through. If there was a roamer here, you guys would be toast. There is a roamer upstairs. Okay, he's dead. Looks like you know where the cameras are, at least. So yeah, you guys are going in hard here. 5v3. This might be the final round, actually. This was kind of a blowout by your team here. Your team's just the better team. But even at that, there's still 
ton, a ton of takeaways. I did not see that Jaeger either. If that makes you feel better, I did not see that Jaeger. But still, can say one thing, or a few things. We have the droning, and we have the quick peeking. Now see, I don't see anyone here. That's the thing. But quick peeking's always the move. You always stand by the door, and you peek from left, and then go back right really quick. That is your next move that you need to get down. Now, that's just unfortunate because he saw you without you seeing him. If you were closer to this wall and did a quick peek, you would have seen that deeper angle and then been able to have a more fighting chance. At that point, yeah, you didn't see him on your screen because it was just a bad angle. Doc was the roamer at the beginning of the round. So yeah, your team just fragged out. Round is over. Once again, the guys didn't just go plant the bomb. People just value people too much, I guess, in this. People always just want to frag out, frag out, frag out. Instead of just going in, planting the bomb, win the round, how it's meant to be won. Not every round is going to be won just by kills. You have to actually have to plant the bomb, put some pressure on them. If it's a 3v1 and the guy has to kill you all really fast, then it puts a lot more pressure on the person trying to clutch. If these other guys are just attacking him and coming in one by one by one, it could go very badly this is one of these inconsistencies is that yeah you're gonna win these situations a lot but those few rounds where the guy actually does clutch on you well that's unfortunate and very very uh, very avoidable you always just play with your teammates always refrag that's the name of the game refragging yes, if you've Sam. ever watched pl that right Sam. there is what they do that's basically all of pre pl right there i don't know what that doc was doing so here's the final roundup so he was a gold three obviously he should not be there he should not be in gold three with the way he was playing. But I could see where the inconsistency from. You don't really drone that much whenever you're in game. You always throw your drone away probably because you don't drone that much. But you should really get in the habit of droning and droning and droning. I know you play some entry fragging type of roles. But just, just start off with at least 40% of the round just stay droning. If you're a support player, it should be upwards of 50% of your round should be just droning in general. But you are playing fraggers, so 30-20% is okay. But you're spending about 0% on drone. Only time you're spending on drone is sending it into sight and getting it shot at. Other than that, learn quick peeking. Quick peeking will make you a tremendous player. Your aim, fantastic. It's better than mine, to be honest. And finally, your movement, it's okay besides the quick peeking, basically, is all I got to say there. Overall, though, I don't think there's any way you should be staying in this rank for long. Obviously, you did make plat for a very, very limited time, but you should get back there uh, probably pretty soon. Just for example, Obviously, you are too high of a rank if this is how your KD is going and how your win loss is going. So, obviously, this abandon here obviously hurts. 55, 61 wins, 55 losses, 52% win rate. This is a part of the inconsistencies. When you say you're inconsistent, it's because you're doing inconsistent things. Sometimes you want a drone. Sometimes you want to keep it in there. Just consistently do the same thing every single round. Keep both of your drones. Use them both. Drone 50% of the round. And everything else will just come. Obviously, you're going to lose some gunfights just because some bad timing or just like that situation where you couldn't see the Jaeger and he could see you. And anytime something like that happens, instead of going, hey, I couldn't see him. Oh, how could I have seen him? Well, quick peeking there. You would have seen him if you would have hugged the wall left. From the way you took the angle, kind of like a hard, slow peek around the corner right around the capitao he just had an angle on you that you couldn't see him so very very little things holding mashu fps back he is right there right on the cusp of being a plat player definitely and that is his goal is to hit plat and stay in plat so i definitely see you um doing that if you want any help definitely go into the discord chat go to the high elo thing and i'll be happy to help you i know that your skill is definitely higher than a goal too so if you ever want that just go into the discord chat and then leave me at everyone else go ahead and join the discord chat and you'll find people in your skill range no matter what down below all you have to do is just set your platform set your region and then go to your designated i'll go to it right now just to show you guys here you go here's our thing you're gonna come in here you're gonna have your welcoming rules you just accept that you set your platform so pc ps4 xbox 
you come down here pit north america wherever you are from so as you can see we have people from all over the world and we're up to about 800 900 members Jeez, this channel is growing really fast but anyways you come in here and you just say what you're trying to play if you're playing xbox pc p playstation etc and then i have the high elo pc if you all want to play with me uh, by high elo i don't mean high elo i just mean like flat level players i'm not talking diamond or anything so if you're interested in that go ahead and join up if you can other than that hopefully this was beneficial to all of you and i will see you guys in the next one peace out